Oh my god, what if he comes see me doing that? <laughs> oh no, he's looking the other way. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to the show. Today is episode... 125 and today is my birthday so I don't know what our topic is we're just gonna have a regular show uh this is this is my gift this year is a pet stroller so I can more easily take Lola on our walks as you can see Tormund is in it right now he thinks that he's not even in the stroller part he's in the bottom part that's the stroller part and it has a dome thing that comes up and then um, this whole part is actually like a travel crate and it has things to uh, for to put in the car for a car seat so they're for the seat belts to go through and then there are um, there are hooks inside of it to um, attached to their harnesses so you can use it for walking and travel and then it's just like a a um what should we call it like a tr like a travel crate so because I have one thing for Lola right now and I'm trying to think of what it's called but it's more like a pod. It, it was, it can go in the car and has the thing for seatbelt. And then it's domed and, but that whole thing zips off. So it's like a pod. It's this weird looking thing. And then that can be used. If you take that off, it can be used as a bed. It's real soft inside. So, but it's hard to carry. Um, it's not very, it's big. So it's hard to carry. So this has an actual handle that you can carry. And then when you pop that out, you can just put the whole stroller down. It's very, very light and very easy. I can do it even with my arthritis. Um, and I got gray instead of black because so it wouldn't retain as much heat. <laughs> but remember that gray is pastel black, so it's okay. I have to order a pad for the inside because it does not have a nice squishy pad. Um, but I'm really excited to um, take this on our walk today because um, I think it'll help me walk better because uh, I'll have something to hold on to and instead of having Lola in a sling on, on my chest which kind of messes with your center of gravity uh, she can be in here and you know be fine so that's what I got for my birthday and I'm so excited because it's exactly what I wanted <laughs> Um, otherwise I don't really like my birthday because, you know, I think, well, getting older. And then also if you are estranged from most of your family, it's not, it's kind of a reminder of, you know, that your family's all messed up and also that you don't have any friends. <laughs> So you're like, oh, it's a, it's just like yesterday and it's just like tomorrow. So, um, I don't know. I don't make a big deal for birthdays. I mean, unless they're a kid, I don't make a big deal for birthdays. So I just, I don't know. It was never a happy time in my childhood. You, we didn't get like birthday parties or stuff like that. So it wasn't really... We would get an ice cream cake from Dairy Queen, and I have a dairy allergy, so those weren't fun for me. I just wanted a regular cake. <laughs> so I guess as long as you get cake, it's a good birthday, and you can get your own cake, so I don't know. Welcome to my knitting channel. Did I say that already? I like to start with welcome to my knitting channel, just in case you're not sure where you are. You have wound up in a knitting channel. This is my knitting channel. Welcome. It's gorgeous outside. It's a little cold. This guy over here. Oh, that's my umbrella. Um, 
this guy in this is it a dump truck he seems to be gathering <coughs> tree limbs from the back I'm assuming from the backyard <laughs> since I can't see the backyard and then he is <coughs> chainsawing them so I hope he's done with the chainsaw now <laughs> that I can get started because I'm already two hours behind schedule <coughs> so Getting that, I forget that the skylight comes right into my face while we do this. We're going to have to back it up some pretty soon. Anyway, <coughs> I'm not wearing anything knit today. This is actually machine knit from Target. I just wanted something a little bit warm because I was cold. Well, I had the door open but then he started his stuff so I closed the door and now it's not so cool in here anymore um so let's start I'll start with whips my first whip is the rocket tea by Tanis Lavalle I don't know how to say her name um now I had to rework the math for this because um, I was not getting the same row count and when you're doing a top-down sweater row count is very important if you are taller <laughs> so I had to redo all of the math um, because of my row count was not the same as the pattern um, so then I rewrote the pattern and hit where I need my numbers to be and my rows to be so I know uh, where I need to do stuff. Um, I was thinking I should probably do an episode on how to do that if that's helpful for you and how to figure because there's really only one like for mathematical formula that you need to do all of that. To do, I use one thing to do to figure out everything my weights my ev everything I use it for everything um, so that might be helpful if I'll I'll work that into our next uh, open one I also still did want to do one on how to test knit <laughs> um, anyway what am I saying so I had to change all of the things and then I decided because it's a v-neck I decided to go ahead and start the v-neck at the underarm separation because I want I really don't feel like there's a, a V that's too low <laughs> and that's how this one's working up <laughs> if I do the like I don't I don't want it just right here it can come because it's I'm always gonna be wearing something underneath it so it's not like a it's more of a comfort thing where it won't be strangling me too much do you know what I mean so I don't know I haven't decided um, plus be, you can always pick up and add you know um, collar and stuff but from where the back is you know I won't be able to do that too much um, but I'm trying to figure out before I go any farther in the pattern I have to figure out at what point they connected it at what at what measurement they connected it and at what point I want to because I'm really not afraid of a, of a deep V that does not bother me at all sorry the light changed while he was chainsawing um the only other modification I made was to I used yarn overs as the if you look on the picture there is an eyelet there eyelet um, increases down the thing I did not want holes so I still used I still use the yarn overs but I just 
uh, worked them through the back loop when I came to them instead of leaving them open. I just closed them. That's all I did. Um, I did decide to alternate skeins every two rounds. So every time I came back, I switched them. I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen a lot of comparison of I haven't seen a lot of comparison in uh, what actually happens with different yarns if you you know if you um, alternate skeins instead of you know working one at a time I don't know that this is it's striping instead of pooling, I guess, but it's still also pooling, so I'm not really sure. I, I have so many um, variegated um, um, like hanks of two uh, that I had planned to make th these anyway, so I'm like, I'm trying to figure out like the different ways I can do them so I'll have visual representations of what they look like done a certain way so you get more of an idea of how they'll come out cuz I don't think there is an if if you know of something that shows that I would I would love if you left me a link cuz I would love to see it. Um even if we did like swatches of if you you know but see the the problem there too is that there are different ways to dye so like this is a a half so this is half and half so half of this skein half of the loop because it comes in a loop so half of the loop is gray and half of the loop is burgundy that's sometimes they're three across so you actually get one color, one color, one color, and then one color. So there's actually four, even though two of those colors are the same, but they're broken up from the loop. Then you can do a one quarter where one color is one quarter and another one is, you know, like 75%. So there's different ways to break down a skein, which I did that all the year before last when we did the dye projects were all um, for the shawls where I did them all that way so you could see they all look like tiger striped I absolutely loved it um, but that does give you some idea of how each of those break down so then you have how those break down and then plus how it's gonna break down if you add in another skein So I'm wondering if I had done this in just one. He gonna go in it. Yeah. It, it's not even for him. It's for Lola. He's been biting it too. You better not bite anything in there, mister. They're like little demons. <laughs> they get into everything. Don't bite. Oh, <gasps> torment. Don't. The thing with torment, I'm getting <laughs> sun right in my eye. The thing with Tormund is that he doesn't care if you yell at him. He t he is not bothered by you yelling at him. He's like, okay, cool, whatever. It's like Alvin and the Chipmunk Chipmunks. Do you remember Alvin? It's the same thing. I think he likes it. Uh, so anyway, um, I d I I gotta figure out when I want to close up the V neck. 
and I don't know what my I don't know how how to measure for the sleeve separation to know if it's right like I don't know what I personally like for sleeve separation I figured it should go down like to the middle of your armpit like come in under because that's where the body of it is going to right but then see this one is right up in your armpit because it's not meant to it's right here it's not really meant it's meant to it's a drop sleeve so it's meant to go over here right so it's a different kind of sleeve it's not going to give me any idea of what I don't have a a raglan I don't have any raglan to look at this thing annoys the snot out of me because it doesn't fit right on the shoulder Everything's irritated. I've been having one of those days where I think my senses are just heightened to everything. And I didn't sleep well, so, ooh, because I never sleep well. But anyway. Um, I'm so indecisive with what I want to do because I, I don't really have a preference. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, pooling doesn't bother me, so I don't care if this pools. And I'm like, is it easier to just do one at a time? Yes. Am I regretting that I didn't do that? Also, yes. I really don't mind pulling. I could have done one at a time. And I dyed these. I know they match. <laughs> so if, if ever I was going to do it, this is the one. Because I know it, they match perfectly. Because I only made four of them. So. I, I love these colors so much. Um, anyway. And I started this twice. Um, so this is my second start from, so this is what I got done since yesterday. So, was it yesterday or the day before? It might have been the day before. Uh, what's next? Oh, that needs to go in there. This is going to be another, awkward, I don't know what's happening. Okay, what's next? Oh, also, my second whip, I started another Neutral Territory by Katie DeGroff Knits, which was my test knit that I finished last month. I started another one because, like I said, I had um, some of the same yarn in colors that were more suited to me. And because I was wearing that one so much, I was like, I might as well just make one for me. Um, these, this, this is um, Stroll Tonal from Knit Picks. Um, let's see what color I got. This is seashell. Cordial, which is like cherry, dark cherry, black cherry. It's a burgundy. And then the last color is called raven, and it is like periwinkle, purple, burgundy and like a raspberry pink and gray and black if you can see that it's got lots of colors in it um so these are all my my colors so these should be okay i am almost to the point where we add in the second the second color um, but this seashell is very very pretty it's like white and some pinks very pretty love how it works up double stranded this would probably really go really well with the cucumber in the other one but I don't have the other one in here maybe I'll show them to you I figure Lola's getting a sweater out of the leftover like some sort of marled sweater. I, I love this pattern so much. Um, I'm, I'm almost, I mostly uh, have this for the weekends because I'm trying to get what I didn't realize and what I usually plan is to not have, you know, three projects that are fingering weight at the same time because then it's so much 
yardage to get through for the month. But that's held double, so that's technically like DK. So I'm not sure that really counts as a, f but we have a, uh, a top that's going to use two skeins of fingerings. That's 800 and. Four thirty five, so six, seven, eight, seventy, eight hundred and seventy yards. And then this one is four hundred and ninety two, four hundred and ninety. That is getting me right in the eye. Four hundred and ninety two yards. Um, bamboo pop sock. And Nocturnal is the color. It's just black. I just got through the increases. It's not going to focus on this anyway. I actually don't need this anymore. Um, but we're on the increases now. I mean, we're done with increases now. So it's just working in the round until we're done. Which is going to take forever. I don't think we're going to finish this this month because of everything else I have to do. Finished objects? I didn't even tell you what I had for you at the beginning of the show, did I? I have, I have a finished object. Uh, which is not uh, the... the oh, should I show you the good one first? Okay, so... I did finish the sport weight double layer hat. This is in Willow Verbena, which is a sport weight in the color Evergreens. I do not recommend this yarn unless you like single ply. It is a single ply super wash. Seventy five percent super wash wool, twenty five percent nylon. Um, so here it is all finished. Um, so the inside, I put that where it messed, where it got messed up. I put that on the inside. Um, but these hats are reversible once I cut the strings off, but I won't do that yet. Um, so should be. It's double layer. So you can then double up the brim or you can single the brim and have a floppier, what do you call it, slouchier hat if you want. Um, one seems tighter than the other ones. I wonder if I blocked them a different way. But I use the thing I block my hats on, so I don't know. Um, so that's done, obviously, because I started the bamboo pop hat. The other thing I finished is a pattern I showed you yesterday from Gromedes which is the Star Explorer adjustable wrap top. That was $5. I did not like this pattern. I got to say, um, I, I hit the measurement. I hit gauge. Um, but this says one size fits most. And that would be true if you are a large. Because this is how big the breast part is. It is eight inches wide. <laughs> it's eight inches wide. So what I did is in order for to try to c customize this in some way, I decided I would make it how it said, and then I would decide what size I would need. Um, and I'm trying to figure out the best way to do that. It's probably to fold this over until I find a good size. Because, I mean, 
I'd like to be covered, but this is like ridiculous. <laughs> so I was thinking, um, I did see a top that was similar that was free on YouTube. So I'm going to go through my history and see if I can't find what I, um, was watching. Also, it actually has three ties because there's no pictures of the back. So I assumed it was just a halter that would tie at the top and then go around and tie. But she has this bottom part come out and tie too. So I was thinking if you came around and hooked to across, if you hooked across the back, so you came around the whole side and then hooked to the back here, you could get rid of this. And then it would be higher up on your back. Do you know what I mean? And I think connecting these is great. I just didn't get the right, um, the right number. So I'd need the right number. And then I think you could just pop these around and connect it to the back. instead of having connect it here instead of having a third tie then you wouldn't need the third tie then you wouldn't need any ties you would just need two of these for swimsuits swimsuit hook These are at Joann's for like $3. Um, you can probably get them online too, I suppose. They only had this kind and this size there, so I got them just to see what I could do with it. Um, so while I don't really care for this pattern, um, I don't think it's worth $5. Um, and here's why. If I'm going to buy a $5 pattern that is one size fits most, it better have some instructions on how to fix the fit for other, because there's no way everyone, especially for a bra top, I thought one size would be like a medium, would be like, you know, so it would be more easy to make larger or smaller but this is so huge like or to say like where on your body it should go and obviously if you have some some big boobs this is not going to fit you at all um and there's there's absolutely basically i think she made it to fit the mannequin <laughs> and it fits the mannequin great <laughs> um but also i i worry about the the wearableness wearability of it staying where it's supposed to also you could sew um some of those pads in there, those um like forms in here to give it a little bit more structure and also so nothing's poking out. Um, I was thinking if I'm, I bought some black cotton to make one in black and I was thinking if I got a black pad I could put that in there and then it would, wouldn't be noticeable. Um, because that cotton is not very soft. <laughs> so I'd like that, that little form, you know, the like the not in swimsuits, in like, like you get in cheap um, sports bras that aren't actually meant to do anything. <laughs> like the sports bras that don't help, but they're like the pat, the form in there is just to like keep your nipple from showing, I guess. Um, you know, like those things, those inserts. Um, you can, you know, sew those in for added protection, I guess, if you need it. I just, I feel like this design is 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 not um, 
I think it was designed to fit that mannequin. And I don't, I don't know who this is going to fit. Um, I also think a one size is, um, is harder to do if it's for the breast area. <laughs> Cause who's one size? I'm not even one size, you know? Mine are different sized, so. I don't, very unhappy with that. I wish it, it had, it was better. This, the sizing's off and there's no, um, I'm trying to find a way to make the sizing be better and more, um, how to change it for different, uh, well, first how to change it for me. And then, um, I feel like $5 for that pattern is too much when it's not going to fit anyone. <laughs> I'm not sure who, th who that's going to fit besides the mannequin. And I've said that like three times and I wholeheartedly believe it. <laughs> So that's two of my, my two finished items. That's all my whips. Um, I do have some squishy mail and I've been kind of on the fence about how I want to go about doing this because, um, how do I say what I want to say? There's lots of stuff. First of all, I want to preface by saying, I am not an influencer. I don't claim to be an influencer. I don't consider myself to be an influencer. I am a knitter, crocheter, indie dyer, <laughs> designer. I am those things. Uh, I am like a, uh, an artist in this journey. And, and I, I don't want to be anything other than that. And, and it's like, these are my own experiences. Um, However, that's so hot. It's so hot now with it. I can't go anywhere. Um, I also make a lot of purchases, as I'm sure you've noticed. And I don't know how to talk about the things that I don't like. And so far, when I haven't liked something, I've said it's not my favorite. Or like the pattern I just showed you, this is what I don't like about it. Um and why I don't think it, it lives up to this price point. Um, I feel that way about a lot of stuff I buy, including yarn, including bags, including patterns. And, um, so far I have tried to just not talk about the things that I haven't liked. Um, because I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. I really don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Um, but I, I feel like that's also not, I feel like there are people that are influencers. There are people that have channels that are sent stuff for free and they, they say nice things about these things that they're getting for free. And there are also things that they may not use. So they're just showing you, hey, look at what I got. Maybe you want to go buy this and they've given you a code to go buy this. And I think that's great for, you know, uh, exposure, for exposing us to new designers, dyers, products that we might like. But my problem is that there's no transparency. They're not saying this person sent this to me for free. I'm just showing it to you. I haven't actually used it. I don't even know what, like, I have a problem with that. And so sometimes when I see people that are like popular and they're getting talked about, But these are, and then there are also people that I have bought for, and I'm like, that is not at all representative, represent, 
representative of my experience with this person or like I've had dyers um, send me, I had a one dyer send me yarn and all of the color fell out of it, which I showed you. I never named them, but I, because she's closed up, obviously. <laughs> I must have not been the only one who she sent yarn to and all the dye fell out. So luckily I'm a dyer, so that wasn't a problem. I was like, well, that was not worth $30. <laughs> And I would like to be able to tell you when stuff like that happens, like I did with the Euro sock, the uh, Mad Tosh Euro sock that uh, bled when I blocked it and completely ruined my V-back tee that I was making. I also, the Euro sock has been discontinued. Again, Mad Tosh, big giant company now, not afraid to say something bad. However, if this is a small business, it's personal to that small business owner. It's personal to that artist. And it's a sticky place to be because on the one hand, I, I do want to support small bu businesses and small artists. On the other hand, I also, as a consumer, want to know when something is not up to what I consider to be like certain price points. Like if you're just starting out, you cannot charge $30 for a skin in a dine yard. When you're just starting out, you don't know what you're doing. It's, you know, and if, if it's your first design and you're putting it out there for eight to $10 where the pattern simply doesn't warrant that it doesn't have the stuff in it that an $8 pattern will have, eight to $10 pattern. Cause that's, that's pretty high for a pattern. That's pretty standard for a bigger uh, company pattern that ha I mean even the Indian art, but the um, you're gonna it's gonna have been tested it's gonna have been tech edited it's gonna have you know thousands of people like Stephen West it's gonna have thousands of people doing it um, or at least hundreds like how many people does do the MCAL every year you know so that of course yes worth $80 for like the quality control but you don't know who is just in there working out of their basement with no quality control <laughs> and I don't know how to talk about those people without hurting their feelings because that is the absolute last thing I want to do as a fellow artist is to hurt someone's feelings I was unsure whether or not I should even show you stuff that I don't like and I don't know if you want me to do that or not if you want to be warned because typically I just don't I just won't show you but that's hard to like I did show you some dyers this year that I w was not completely pleased with but I p told you that while I was looking at it and I hadn't meant to do that so I don't know if I should just not show you stuff I don't like Because there's, there's a bag that I use often that I hate that I just don't show you. <laughs> I've never talked about it because I hate it that much. I spent so much money on that bag. And again, fabric, fantastic. rest of it, oh my God, I was so angry that I spent that much money on a bag that was... I wanted to throw it in a fire, but it was so pretty and I had a witch on it, so I keep it. <laughs> And every time I use it, I just am filled with rage. <laughs> and don't you, I hate having things like that. Like I have a one skein of yarn that I got from a dyer who is super popular. And they treated me like crap, crap. And the skein is like partially undyed. And I'm like, where are the rest of the colors? Anyway, I'm ready to wrap this up. Um... I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that in or not, so, oh, it's so hot. Um, we'll see. Uh, I don't know what is next week. I'm sorry, I was watching, that guy was using a leaf blower, so I'm watching um, George Santos cry about how he's innocent and um, how he's not going to resign and how he hates the scrutiny, and I think he loves it because he's... Oh, 
Next week we don't have um, is an open thing, so who knows? Maybe we'll have something. Maybe we'll have nothing. I don't know. So what am I doing? I'm saying goodbye. Is what I'm doing. <laughs> I have no idea. What's happening? What day is it? Okay. Uh, thanks for spending the hour with me. I'll see you next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye.